All right. Well, <clears throat> here we are live on Facebook, and it's been a while. Uh, but since I'm in a self quarantine, waiting for uh, some test results, I decided to uh, go ahead and do a little try a live video for you guys and answer any questions you might have. Um, hey, Erica Saga, good to see you. One, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud of so many, so many of you who are handling this crisis and situation really well, even though you're, you're dealing with fear and, um, uh, I will tell you uh, what I know and advice that I'll kind of give uh, that I haven't uh, been willing to share yet because it just hasn't been the right time. Uh, but it, but it certainly, it certainly is now. Um, uh, Erica, I am feeling really well. Thank you. All things considered. Uh, again, my reason for self-quarantine, because I, I did five flights in 36 hours <clears throat> and uh, have had a pretty nasty cough for a while. Um, and I spoke to a pretty good gathering of men um, about a week ago. So... Um, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't want to risk uh, bringing anything home to my family, so I'm out at our training camp. Uh, that's where I've been able to do some shooting, uh, and it's it's been good. So, um, so I will I will seek to uh, answer some questions, um, uh, and I was supposed to hear back today on whether. Uh, on on the test, but it's been 48 hours and they didn't get it back because I should love to be home with my family. I can tell you right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I've got friends from all over the country <clears throat> and all over the world. And hey, Mark. Uh, oh, yeah, I can touch my face all day because it's just me. Uh it's just me. I'm I'm com I'm truly isolated, uh, but yet I'm still washing my hands. I'm out here at uh, our training camp, and uh, so so let let's talk about a few things. Uh, and again, I've been uh, I've been waiting uh, to share some some things with everyone uh, based on uh, the timing. So we're up to almost 300 people watching, so I'll share. And then I hope you guys, right now, you can click to invite others to join us. Uh, one, I'm going to share my perspective on uh, what I consider some inside knowledge because of relationships we have. And two, how to, how to kind of handle a crisis or situation uh, uh, that that's fearful, seeing how we've we've had experience in the last five years, uh, spending a lot of time overseas in non permissive environments. Even at one point, kind of living there for sections of time uh, with the threat of ISIS. Which, whether it's the threat of a virus or ISIS, it's both the fear of being uh, killed, right, or dead. So, uh, I'm I'm telling you guys. Oh, hey, Carla, uh, please tell your 11 year old that's very sweet. That I'm one of her favorite people. That, that warms my heart. So, so first, let's start on. Uh, <laughs> my wife's texting me, so I have to uh, answer that text. Uh, so, uh, because we're in different locations, and I miss her. Mm. 
Can't wait to see her. So, uh, yeah, sorry about the uh, the dropout. It was my wife calling me, so now I just had to send her a text. We're all good. We're back. So what I was saying is uh, I want to give you a little perspective um, regarding some possible insider deal. I've been very, very, very um, careful how I communicate things through social media uh, because of uh, I don't want to incite fear or panic. Uh, if anything, if anything, the exact opposite, Right. So, um, so when the rumors started going around about a possible, you know, domestic flight shut down and, um, uh, other things, um, you know, quarantine, national quarantine, all that, um, I decided to go ahead and, uh, check with a friend through a friend and, um, and I got direct, uh, uh, direct communication and solid information uh, from someone as close as you want to get in certain areas. I have to be very careful because I, I can't give up uh, the source. That would be not good. Uh, but just let me tell you, from the highest levels in our country, I was able to get some information that... What I was saying uh, was very accurate. And um, if you look at my posts, I've tried to gently try to kind of let people know uh, there's some changes, some things going on. And really, it would be prudent to <clears throat> uh, prepare yourselves so one that you're not paranoid. Most people who are really at ease with this, it's because most of them are very prepared. Uh, and um, so it makes it easier to be relaxed. Uh, but for many people who don't have the, the luxury or the even the foresight, if they did, to, to kind of be prepared a little bit, it makes you nervous. And it makes people really nervous. So listen, um, here's the good news. God's really uh, still in complete control of all this. So, will there be uh, a national shutdown? There's a high probability there will be. Uh, and I, the, the probability that I saw and was tracking would, it would be, it would first start in cities and and then it would go to a state level and then uh, it, would, it would move to a national scale. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's the key, everyone. There's nothing wrong with a national quarantine because the infrastructure is not going to stop. Um, uh, the, you know, light, power, all your basic necessities are going to stay solid. Uh, there's nothing that's going to stop the flow of necessities, including food. Um, and you can see how really great the president is doing in area of leadership, first with the team that has surrounded him, and two, the way they're messaging to keep people calm and, and slowly starting to um, allow people to understand that, you know, there's phases and next steps of this. So, um, so one... It's good for there to be, um, whether it's a, they call them a, you know, a, a shut-in or quarantine or something, that's not a bad thing. Uh, so the area of people saying, well, isn't this like the, the flu? Yes and no. Uh, uh, yes, and that it affects people and some people die. And no, in that... Uh, it's new and it is, it's highly transmittable and it, it takes a very, very, it, it's, it, it's, as you all well know, it's hurting older people. So, um, so I would say, um, so where's the advice? 
what would I recommend? Let me tell you what I tell my kids uh, who live in California. I said, I think, um, I think it's important for y'all to try to get some supplies that you would want in the event of disruptions uh, of, of just say food or maybe you're on uh, monthly medicines or something. So, you know, you, you'd want to get that. You don't want to go and hoard because that's why, you know, that, that, that's why there's issues uh, right now. Because there's, there's plenty of supplies in the food chain and at the stores if people don't go and hoard. And so there's going to be this little hiccup and then people will calm down. Listen, we've lived in the realm of zombie apocalypse where ISIS has attacked, destroyed cities, people living in tents, um, all hell breaking loose, and you know, them actively trying to kill, kidnap, and destroy. Uh, you want to know a challenging day? Uh, I counted 40 mortars being shot at us uh, uh, on, our, on our movement to try to help some women and children in a village. So listen to me. Uh, uh, acting afraid and panicky and all that, look, that's, that's just not acceptable. It's not acceptable for, for Christians uh, who have a level of faith and certainly for men who need to lead strong and courageous. Uh, but, being, but being hopeful and kind and helpful and leading well, that is acceptable. And that's, uh, so, you know, look, um, this, everyone, people are going to make it do this easy. Uh, the easier it will be is one, if people pray, Humble themselves before God, because what you haven't seen on any of the media yet is why don't we as a nation humble ourselves before God and cry out for mercy and help? Do I think that he calls us? I'm not saying he's a God of wrath, but man, people can, he'll certainly let people, you know, reap the consequences of just natural challenges and sinful behavior. So man, this is a great time for Christians to rise up and to help people. Uh, help your neighbors. I've got neighbors in their 80s, and we've let them know, hey, we are here for you. Of course, y'all need to stay, uh, you know, home. We'll go shopping for y'all. We'll do whatever you need. And uh, I just may need to borrow your fancy uh, race car, to, you know, your high-end fancy car to, to drive fast to and from places. Neighbor. That's a joke. So, Although he has a nice car. Uh, now, what am I worried about? Uh, hey, Todd. I'm glad you're meeting at the, the old karate school. God bless y'all. Uh, <clears throat> here's, what, here's what people can and should be concerned about. When money starts to dry up from people living paycheck to paycheck and now they can't work because they're at home and they don't have reserves, people will get nervous. And what we have to do is start with family trying to help, uh, trying to help family members and then help with, uh, friends and then help with your neighbors. This is all, this is all good. It's the right thing to do. And then even if you have enemies that hate you, it's okay to help them out. Uh, but you know, I would say this, it's a great thing to be a light, uh, Perfect love casts out all fear, so uh, don't be don't be moving and grooving in fear. That that that'll depress your mind too. Uh, those of you that are in quarantine areas or staying areas, get outside. You can still go outside. You can still shop. They're not allowing you not to shop. You can still have fun. None of this dictates us not having fun. All right. So um, uh, I I would just <laughs> uh, you guys. Look, it's it's people who are going to be extreme thinking and acting goofy and weird that uh, that can hurt the flow of this. Because we have to do this, y'all. There's no turning back. We have to go through this. Uh, it's going to run its course. And uh, you know what? You just, we all got to bear with this and help each other out. Now, 
Um, I'm, I'm thankful for the leadership of our country who are making uh, really good contingency plans to help people get money by sending out checks. Um, you know, there are the organizations already freezing saying, hey, if you can't make payments on your home or this or that, there, there are groups and companies and financial institutions saying, hey, you're not going to be penalized. Don't worry. We're just putting on. So that's, I mean, that's great news uh, because it's, it's us as a whole nation. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's great news. So, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey, can you borrow half of my arsenal? Um, no, I've actually loaned out already all that I can uh, to people who had no means of self-protection in case, in case people just get weird. Because, look, th- don't make this weirder, y'all. You should, you should be able to defend yourself. You should be your first line of defense in our society, period. So uh, I definitely think, get to know your neighbors. <clears throat> if you live in an apartment complex, know who's on your floor. Uh, if you've never met your neighbors, talk to them. Uh, and just say, hey, we're here to help each other. And can I get your phone number so that we can have good comms? So make sure you have good communication. That makes people feel better. Uh, and, and again, the infrastructure, none of that's going to go down, y'all. It's, that's going to be fine. Um, uh, will they get caught up with the testing and all that? Yes. Why was I able to get one? I just, I got an email from my doctor and I, uh, they let me know they were going to be doing testing. <clears throat> uh, and I told them, well, okay. And I called them and said, well, you know, I just, I just got back and I was on five flights. I've been around thousands of people cause that's, you know, I had to go somewhere and do something and then did some speaking and was around a ton of people. And they said, well, yeah, just come on in because I was already in self-isolation uh, because I had touched so many people. Uh, and um, so, yeah, I just rolled up. They did it. And I'm waiting on the results right now. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, so who do I feel concerned about the single moms? Um, you, you know, oh, thanks, Eric, about uh, in, you're in Denver, 68 days for results. I'm going to be a lonely man. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, but I, I haven't had any, outside of the cough, I hadn't had any ma- major symptoms that are affecting me. And maybe it's just, if I do have it, maybe it's just, it's a light case or something. Because y'all saw that sweet nurse uh, shove that thing up my nose. And I was like, well, it didn't look like it went far. I was like, I think it touched the back of my brain. Um, so so where was I? Yeah, I, I, I feel, I have concern for elderly people, people with no family. Uh, and again, it is a great time. It is, it is a great time for the church to step up. And... You know, because you can't, we shouldn't be relying on the government to do everything for us. Uh, the body of Christ, we, I mean, we are the body of Christ. So I would definitely say, uh, like I've had, and the reason why I'm doing this, I've had so many people calling me, texting me, emailing me, saying, hey, bro. And uh, and I know what they're saying. They're like, well, hey, what's up? What do we what do? We do? You know, this is, this is nerve wracking. And I said, so I just basically say, don't, don't freak out. Uh, keep your eyes on the Lord, uh, exercise every day, uh, you know, watch your TV. Don't, don't obsess on the news, you know, cause that, that'll get you spun out and, uh, and know that it's just, we got to do this. That, that is definitely the trajectory. We got to do this. It's going to be definitely probably a couple of rough weeks, but it'll be easy if everybody just chills. Just chills and relax. Uh, so the church, we the body of Christ, what we can do. Take inventory. I think this is a type of crisis, so there should be a command in crisis. Uh, pastors who aren't used to leading, uh, but are just Bible teachers, but don't, they're not really maybe gifted leaders. Find the men in your church who are. Find the men in your church who are leaders and assign them. Uh, you know, uh, tell them giddy up time. What, let, let's uh, let's communicate. Uh, if you need to meet, meet at a distance. 
and then figure out, let's get the roll call. Where are elderly people? Let's start making calls. Let's check and take care of the body of Christ. Um, because elderly people need to stay home. They, even if they can go out and buy something, they need to stay home. And neighbors and friends and family need to go shopping for them. So um, uh, it, are, are there things that may happen? Uh, like, you know, people saying, well, you know, there's, there's rumors about Texas, uh, you know, having to get shut down. I'm like, well, yeah, I'd probably say, uh, yeah, that there may be truth to the rumors. Every state should be ready to be shut down. Every city. That way you're not going to get freaked out, okay? Uh, and um, uh, just uh, let, let's hit this thing head on, strong, prayerful. Uh, stay in contact with me um, and um, uh, pray for people who need prayers. I'm going to be speaking. I'm going to give a message uh, this Sunday on Facebook. And it's, it's, I think we've entitled it, um, I was, I was, you know, struggling with the title, but I think we're just going to name it how to have fun in the midst of a catastrophic crisis. How's that? Because for some of you, this is catastrophic. This is one of the worst things you've been through and, and there's inconvenience, but it's, you know, it's going to be fine. That's, that's the main thing. It's, it's going to be okay. So, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bored. I miss my wife. I can't wait to take her out and romance her. When I say take her out, I, it's probably be out to a mountaintop. Beautiful drive. Can't wait to hold her hands. Uh, look into her eyes. And let her know how much I love her. And distance has definitely heightened my fondness for my bride. So, uh, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me. And let me see here. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, whoa. Uh, do I have my dog with me, Todd? Yes, I do. Scout is with me. Reagan is with her and the kids. Um, I'm, I'm going to be looking and try to read some questions, okay? So let's see here. Um, oh, that's great. Someone went shopping today uh, for someone who's 87, if I'm remembering that right. That's great. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read questions here. Okay, so there's a lot of books and end time prophecy and things going on out there. And I would just say, be, be careful, everyone. Uh, be careful for those trying to profiteer. And be careful for um, trying to link up all this. You know, we don't have to over-spiritualize it. This is this is when I say when people are like, have you seen this video and conspiracy? And then I go, yeah, there's a major conspiracy. It's Lucifer. He's out to destroy the world. He's blind to the minds and hearts of men and women. And we're in this world to advance the kingdom of God through his light. That's uh, as far as the details and all this. Yeah, I'm sure there are. Uh, should we take a position to stand in every aspect of society? Absolutely, I, I do. I'm not an isolationist, except right now. Uh, so yeah, we we should really definitely uh, uh, reach out there. But I wouldn't obsess about uh, too much over end times because look, whether this is the beginning of end times or whether we're kind of in some stuff or whatnot, the reality is, I mean, we're all gonna past go the way of the earth as David said when he was talking to his son Solomon um, so I, I you know I, however the Lord wants to do that that's his business I've always said that it's, it's not mine it's only mine to obey and trust him I trust him with the rest because um, he's in control so uh, 
So what else? What else we got here? Uh, uh, I love hanging out with y'all. I mean, this is actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, uh, please share this um, and and keep this going. Uh, that that matters. Hey, Dottie. Uh, okay. Do you think the National Guard we will? Whoops. Got another phone call. Do I believe the National Guard will be deployed? Yes, I do. Um, I think that's a uh, very real possibility in different cities, but I, I welcome it. If, if, if we're at a point where we need distribution to be done, uh, man, thank the Lord for those in uniform who are stepping up. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for supporting them. Uh, uh, Robert Baltanato, a friend of mine, he works at K-Wave, uh, long-time friend, love his family. Uh, they're getting so many deliveries at their door or whatever that they put out a basket of just goodies uh, to thank the, all the drivers for what they're doing. I just thought, man, now that's cool. That I mean, I, 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 I love that. So how can the church be preparing? Well, people are going to be afraid. And, um, you know, it's a good time to, to ask them, you know, what, what are you afraid of dying? What are you afraid of inconvenience? What do you, you know, uh, and, and just, just talk to them and say, well, you know, uh, I'm not thrilled about dying or I'm not thrilled about all the unsettledness, but can I share it with the hope that I have and the peace that I, I cling to? And, and then share, use it as an opportunity, right? Just, just use an opportunity. I've, I've always sought to use any aspect of good or bad in my life to further the gospel, right? Because is it all bad? You know, well, you know, uh, sometimes it seems really bad, but it, it may be a great opportunity to further the gospel, to share uh, my faith. So, yeah. What else do we have here? Okay, can y'all you, you hang on for a second? Just... Here we are. All right. Uh, thank y'all for your good comments, saying y'all appreciate this. And um, is Monica uh, ask, is martial law likely, my opinion? Well, I'd say it's not likely, but it's definitely probably on the table. It has to be. Or, I mean, martial law is always on the table for extreme situations. And this may be, this may require that if, if we can't see the cases go down, if people start getting out of control, if there's chaos. And again, martial law is not the worst thing. I, we have, <laughs> we've lived and worked in areas where I mean, you, you got a road, you get a roadblock every so often uh, with guns of people who aren't ruled by necessarily laws, and uh, you got to go through these checkpoints to get to your objective uh, in the work that we're doing. So uh, here in America, I'm not worried if martial law happens. Okay, I, if it's at that point where our leaders that we're praying for, because we're all praying for our leaders, right? If they declare, oh, man, we, we really need to be able to, things are really gone sideways, then I'm like, welcome. Get the troops out there. Uh, put some things in place to calm or hinder what I would call the manifestation of evil, okay? So uh, that's kind of my answer to that. Hey, Nevada. Nevada. Hey, Indiana. Okay, let's see. Yeah, again, don't let um, don't let the fear of something happen make you panic. Uh, I I always run these just worst case scenarios. I mean, how many times have we been to Iraq and Syria or? 
other places where, you know, it's high risk and um, you, know, you gotta you gotta trust the Lord. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my family and I, uh, we had to hide out for a few days because when we were overseas in Iraq, because the FBI contacted our security guy and a friend and said, hey, you know, ISIS is looking for, uh, you know, the Americans. And I guess we were high profile because we were doing, and we had done so much radio and television and that, uh, uh, in the camps, helping the kids and all that and women. So uh, we had to hide for three days. And, um, you know, I remember my son, I'll just tell you a personal story before we left to go there. Uh, my son, who was 12 at the time, he was he had his concerns about going to Iraq. And he said, Dad, are you going to put us anywhere where ISIS can get us? And I looked at him, I said, are you, are you scared? He goes, well, yeah. I said, you know what? That's a normal response, but it's not a good one. He looked at me, he said, what? I said, first of all, no, we're not going to put you anywhere where ISIS can get you. That's that's not our goal. Dad has to go to places that may be a little bit more intense, um, where ISIS is everywhere and, you know, bad things get up. I said, but you guys are staying in a safe house. We have security. We have armored vehicles. We have redundancies. You know not to roll on a body armor. You're not loading an AK. You know, some basic first aid. You, we, we've got redundancy and redundancy. And I'm telling this while we're here in the States. And because we had prepped them before we were going to go. I said, now, now, you're afraid right now, but are you in danger? And he went, like, am I in danger right now? I said, yes, huh? He goes, no, sir. I said, right. No danger. Why be afraid? Don't let fear suck the life out of you about something that might happen when in this moment you're in no danger. I said, Dad knows a lot about fear. Man, I remember fear as a kid. I've, I mean, I've, I've been fearful of things in my adult life. But I said, you know, God's grace will be sufficient for you if we get into a situation. And if we get into a situation where there's danger, I promise you, you'll be the first to know. And then, remember, we've got redundancies. We're prepared, you know. You know, we went and all that stuff happened. And literally, it was months later, after we got back here to the States, that he said, hey, Dad, remember the whole thing you told me about? Don't be afraid because we're not in danger and, you know, worried about something that may happen. I said, yeah, he goes, when something did happen, he goes, I, I, I wasn't afraid. I said, God's grace was sufficient for you. And you know what? You as a Christian, God's grace will be sufficient. So you guys, this isn't, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So again, in a, in a nice, solid way, uh, if you're not in a, a stay put area, you should go to the store, kind of get a few basics, uh, if you're worried that you don't have a lot, then, you know, take time. Take time. Go to five different grocery stores and get what you need. Because, I mean, I was, in one, I was in one store and there was like stuff was gone. And I was just like, I was like, oh, my goodness. I actually videoed it. I should post it. But, you know, uh, someone was like, oh, my gosh. All the orange juice is gone. And uh, I said, oh, okay. Well, you know what? Well, we we actually just went to another store. And there was a lot of orange juice. So you, it, don't don't let the fear of oh no, the, uh, it's fine. It's gonna be good. All right. Hey Perry, love you, man. Uh, I love all y'all. I just I appreciate y'all's faith and prayers and and uh, you know we're all in this together. I'm here with y'all. Y'all can um, let's see. Hey, what's up, Los Angeles? Leah in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, well, 
Um, I, I'm, a, I'm about to turn this thing off and we'll do some more because I think y'all said you enjoy this and hopefully it, it brings calm and peace. I'm, I'm always honest with people, uh, especially, you know, at threats or whatever, but I've led so many teams into situations and places and, and I've seen amazing leaders under high stress uh, and their life and death, right, uh, do just great things. Uh, I love Bo Dave Eubank. He's he's one of them that uh, love him to pieces, him and his family. And I hope y'all were able to see their film and it's, it, it should come out again. So uh, we'll do more of these. Uh, and maybe y'all can catch me Sunday morning. Uh, I'm in Colorado right now. A lot of snow. I'll be teaching. And um, you know what? Uh, thank you for your prayers and continued support of the ministry. Because we are, I mean, we're not stopping what we do. We've, we've done a little bit of shifts, but we're still operating. As a matter of fact, uh, our team member in Syria uh, that I can't give all the details for security reasons, but I can say that uh, the, the enemy definitely wants to take her out because of what she does. And uh, I'm, I'm convinced the attack was very coordinated to try to kill her. Uh, she's been in a coma, and we got word yesterday she's out. Uh, and then uh, they sent me a picture, and she's doing a little, has her hand up a little bit of, a little bit of wave. So I really appreciate just great, great. I mean, really uh, heartfelt stuff. So love you guys. Thanks for your prayers. Again, I'll keep you all posted on everything. And uh, 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 again, I may be able to take some time to answer a couple of questions um, typing. But otherwise, we'll do this again if y'all like. Share it. The shares really help increase the algorithms on Facebook. Uh, and that matters. So uh, God bless y'all. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon.